In this video, we're going to work with the coordinate system encoding with Chrome. We're going to draw some circles and we're going to see how we can change how those circles look and how, where they are positioned in our stage. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with a new JavaScript project. Uh, I'm going to draw or to write a very basic statement here. I'm going to write draw.circle and I'm going to type in 100, 100. So draw, period, circle open parentheses, close parentheses, 100, 100. That's a comma in between them. So one of the most important things that you'll learn right away in JavaScript or any other programming language is that syntax is pretty important. So syntax is the way we, we work with the computer. It's the commands that we give it. It's the things that we say to the computer. Syntax means that we have to draw a circle using exactly this type of code. Uh, we can change what parameters we pass in, what values we give it, what kind of options we're going to tell the circle, uh, but we need to use this kind of statement to actually draw the circle on the screen. So draw.circle is going to draw a circle at position 100, 100. Now if you've taken high school algebra, you know that in high school algebra we have a coordinate system where we have four quadrants. The top left is going to be your negative x and positive y. The bottom left is going to be your negative x and negative y. The bottom right is going to be your negative y and pos positive x. And your top right is going to be your positive y and your positive x. Now, when we're working with coordinates in the JavaScript drawing system for coding with Chrome, we start off with the 0, 0, just like we would in, in your coordinate system in algebra. Uh, we would go ahead and start in the top left corner here. That would be 0, 0. Now, instead of going, the, you know, if you think about the representation there, that would make this look like the bottom right quadrant where we have negative y and we have positive x. But when we're working with the coordinates in JavaScript, we actually go positive x, positive y. So positive x moves to the right, positive y moves to the bottom. And we can see how this changes if we change the parameters to our draw.circle statement. If we go ahead and say draw.circle 0, 0, you'll see that our circle comes to the very top of the screen. And if we want to move it, say, 200 pixels to the right, we'll go ahead and put in 200 for our first parameter, which is our x. And you can see now that it's moving out to the right. And if we want to move it 300 pixels further, we'll go ahead and change that. 500, 0. And you can see we're only seeing half of the circle because the rest of it's being drawn off of the stage. If we want to move that down a little so we can actually see it, we'll go ahead and say plug in 200 here for our second parameter, our y coordinate. Now you can see the circle is moving further down the screen. So uh, we can actually move the circle around just by modifying the parameters to our statement here. Now we can actually modify how wide our circle is by giving it a third parameter to this statement. If we go ahead and say 50, what we'll actually do is change the radius of the circle that's drawn on the screen. So if we do something like put the, the circle at 300, 300, and then pass in 300 for a radius, you can see here now it's taking up, it's touching the top of the screen, it's touching the left of the screen, and it's taking up almost the entire stage. In fact, if we increase this by just a little bit, we should be able to get it to take up the entire stage. You know, now it's going a little bit further outside. But this actually allows us to modify this circle by adding additional values instead of just the first two values that we start with. Now, when in JavaScript, when we're working with statements like this, we have some of them are going to allow us to modify the number of parameters and number of values, number of options that we pass into that statement. So 300, 300, 340, if we take this one out, it's just going to go back to the default value for that radius. So we can actually add a few more parameters. We can pass in, say, a parameter for our radius. We can also pass in a parameter for our color. Now we can have a black circle. In fact, we can pass in a parameter for our color, black. We can also pass in a parameter for our line color outside of it. Let's say we want a red lined circle. And you can see, just barely see there's a red line around it. Now, a couple of things that you should identify here. When we create these new parameters, we're not making them numbers. We're making them strings. Uh, and strings in JavaScript can be started with a, a single quote and ended with a single quote. They can also be started with a double quote and ended with a double quote. In JavaScript, it's interchangeable. So you can see here I have one parameter that is a string that has double quotes, and I have one parameter that's a string that has single quotes. 
So you can see now, as I uh, add additional parameters, I'm modifying this further. In fact, I can have even one more parameter that's going to identify how wide that line around the circle is. So using draw.circle, I can give a few numbers, I can give a few strings, and I can give this last number for the width of the line around the circle. Now these strings that we've passed in, they represent some of the colors that we can use with encoding with Chrome to draw our circles. We can actually use draw.circle. Let's go ahead and draw another circle here. And we will make this a smaller circle and we'll make this one blue and purple. So now you can see that purple border around that blue circle. And we've got a few other colors. You know, we could use magenta. We could use cyan. We can use green. We can use gray. So there's a lot of different colors. In fact, you could just try one out. You know, one of the fun things about programming is experimenting with different values. So you could just try out different values. You know, you could try dark blue. And see, that one is not going to give us a valid string. but dark blue as one word will. So you can try out different colors and see if they're actually going to draw. In fact, you can draw a few different circles as well. Draw dot circle. Let's go ahead and put one cl closer to the bottom. Now you can see here I made a typo. If I actually spell that wrong, what's going to happen is I'm going to get an error. So even if I just make a simple circle, it's going to give me this error. And if I click my bug icon, you can see exactly where that comes up. Uh, uncaught type error this C-R-I-C-L-E is not how you do it. And that's exactly why syntax is so important when we're writing code. So if I change that back to circle, and we'll go ahead and we'll make this a little bit further down. We'll put that closer to the bottom of the screen. We'll make it a 40 pixel wide, or 40 pixel radius circle. Uh, we'll go ahead and say, we'll make this one green and blue. So now you can see we have another circle towards the bottom of our screen. So this gives us the ability to draw some circles. It, talks, it shows you a little bit about how the coordinate system works. Our X moves out to the right and our Y moves down to the bottom. You can see how wide to make your circles. And you can learn a little bit about the colors and strings and the different values that you can pass into these statements. Now we're going to talk about comments. Comments are just notes that programmers write to themselves or to other programmers that explain what their code is doing. So comments can work a few different ways in JavaScript. We can first use two forward slashes. Now the forward slash is the key. If you hold down your shift key and hit your question mark, that will type a forward slash. The backslash, which is the one that's probably above your enter or return key, that does different things in coding that we'll get into shortly. But the forward slash, if we type two forward slashes, we can say this statement will draw a circle with a dark blue center and you can see here this doesn't actually change anything the comments that we make are ignored by our by JavaScript we can also make a comment by using a forward slash and then an asterisk that's the one where you hold shift and hit your 8 key this statement will draw a circle with a cyan center and a magenta See, now I've run out of space, so if I want to type a little bit more, I can just type on the next line. A three pixel wide border. Now, that's the special thing about this type of comment. Forward slash star or asterisk allows us to create a comment that spans multiple lines, and it's only ended when we use asterisk forward slash. The first comment, the two forward slashes, this ends at the end of the line. Anything I type here is going to be JavaScript code. And you can see here, if I try to type more, that's going to actually cause an error. So if I were to say, this statement will draw a circle with a dark blue center and a green outline in the center of the stage, now you can see this is actually causing me an error. So if I want to make two lines here, I have to start this one with two forward slashes. This comment, however, can go on for as many lines as I like, and I can type in additional things. This circle will show up close to the top left corner of the stage. 
Now, generally, programmers keep a certain, and you know, we're getting just these little red underlines because we're trailing spaces here. But generally, programmers will keep a certain number of characters available uh, in their window just so that they can still read their code without going on and on and on. Because in JavaScript, you could actually write code or you could write comments that go forever out to the right side of your screen. But that wouldn't really make it very readable, especially if someone was on an older computer that didn't have quite the screen resolution. So we actually usually draw a line in our environment so that we can see how far that's going to be. Now, if I start here, you can notice in the top, bottom left corner of the screen, that's going to show me that I'm on the second line, first character. And as I move to the right, you'll see that that increases, increases, increases. And this line is going to go out to about 80. If I type a few spaces, you can see here this is my 80th character. If I type, type one more space, this is going to be my 80th character. And generally, programmers try to limit their lines to 80 characters or 100 characters, sometimes 120 characters, depending on what their preference is and depending on what their team works with. For right now, we'll keep with 80, and we'll go ahead and move our stage over a little bit more so we can see. Now generally, programmers will create comments that identify who they are in a description of what the file is supposed to do. So I'm going to go to the top of my coding area here, and I'm going to enter one that says author Timothy James. Description. This file will draw a few sample circles. Now you can see here something interesting has happened. When I open my comment, it's actually enclosed all of this into a single comment. And that's because I'm actually opening my comment, but I'm not actually closing again down here uh, on line 16. And you can see that circle that I drew on line 7 is actually gone now because it's part of a comment. So commenting can also be an easy way to remove lines of your code from actually running without having to delete them. So that if you're running into a problem or you want to see how what happens when certain lines are commented, you can see how that affects your program. Now if I go ahead and close my comment here with an asterisk and a forward slash, now you can see that circle shows up again. Once I've got my file where I'd like it, I'm going to save my file. Now, generally when I save my file, I should give it a descriptive name, something like uh, circlesproject.cwc. And then I can go ahead and save that so I can open it again later. So in this lesson, we covered quite a few things. We talked about statements and how we can draw circles on the screen. We talked about how we can vary the parameters or the options that we give to that statement so that we can modify how wide the circle becomes, what colors are in the circle, and what size the lines are around the circle. We also talked about comments and how they can be used to write ourselves notes or to explain what our program does. And we also can identify who we are and what this file is supposed to do. Finally, we were able to save a file so that we can work with it again. Thanks for watching this video, and remember to keep practicing your coding.